Hi everyone, welcome back to My Colourful Country Life. Today I'll be tackling a, another highly requested topic, how to start a colouring page. I've been receiving this question for years now uh, and because it is second nature to me, I have found it challenging to put into words. Um, so I figured why not just show you. If you are interested in this process, stick around as we delve into choosing the perfect colouring book, selecting a specific page, picking the right set of pencils, and most importantly, how to craft a harmonious colour palette. First things first, let's talk about choosing which colouring book you'd like to work in. Today, I'm going to be working in Rita Berman's new book, My Journey Through Africa. I've chosen this book because it's a new release and I've been really excited to colour in it. The illustrations are all incredibly enticing and I can't seem to get enough of this book at the moment. So when selecting a colouring book, do consider what is inspiring you right now. What do you want to colour? Are you inclined towards seasonal themes like an autumnal palette or holiday themes like Christmas? Or do you have a love for colouring intricate floral designs maybe? For me, it's ocean themed pages. They seem to really draw me in. Now, if you're an experienced colourist, you probably have a good sense of which books on your shelf will cater to your current interests and inspiration. But if you're a beginner, don't hesitate to flip through the pages of your books in your collection until you find something that truly captures your imagination. This is a method that I often turn to personally when I'm experiencing a little bit of creative block. Um, I'll select a range of books from my shelves and just explore the pages until something is truly speaking to me. And if I'm still unsure after that, um, I return to the books that I'm currently completing as part of my two full book colour alongs and I choose something from there because I know I'm going to be colouring those pages eventually. I'll pick one of them and get started. Once you have chosen your colouring book, the next step is choosing the specific page you'd like to bring to life. Now, I recommend flipping through your chosen book until you find a page that resonates with you. For today, I have chosen this scene here. Now, that choice for me was based on a request from a comment on my book review where I described materials and the colour of the materials that were used in the building of this mosque. The request was for a colour along to demonstrate how to colour those materials and I will guide you through my colour selection process in a moment. Also, when I say a page jumps out to me or it's calling to me um, or I resonate with it, what I mean is that I can envision some or all of the elements on the page completed. Now, by visualising this, I begin to form the foundations of a colour palette in my mind. The choice of pencils may be straightforward, depending on what's available in your collection. If you have several sets to choose from, my recommendation will be first consider which pencils will work best on the paper, and you can test this in the back of your books, as most books do include a colour palette uh, test page. The second factor to think about is whether your chosen pencil set contains the colours you wish to use based on what you can envision for your page. So today I'm going to be working with Prismacolor pencils. They're an excellent fit for this paper, one of my favourite brands to colour with, and they also offer the sandy and creamy tones I envision for our mosque. Now let's discuss choosing a colour palette for your colouring page. I am going to pop a picture up above of the Great Mosque of Jen. Actually, I may pop up a couple. Now, this is going to be my inspiration for selecting my colour palette. Before we start choosing colours, though, I do want to take a moment to touch on planning colour palettes and where to draw your inspiration from. So, I often get asked if I plan my colouring pages before I start. And the answer is that it varies. It depends on my mood and how I envision the page. If I can picture the entire page coloured, I will plan it out. But if I'm uncertain or I only have a rough idea, I do tend to just go with the flow. Uh, when I'm winging it, I usually just start with an obvious element, such as water or a tree, and then I build my colour palette up from there. Personally, I do prefer to have a plan, especially because I do film pretty much all of my colouring pages for you guys, and it streamlines the process for me, so there's less stop-start throughout the filming process while I'm trying to figure out different colour schemes. Um, now, you can draw inspiration from various sources, 
If the element is based on a real object or animal, you can refer to a photograph. Nature is another fantastic source of inspiration, as are your favourite colour combinations that you've maybe used before. You can also explore colour palettes online for ideas, and I do have a more in-depth video on colour theory and harmonies, including where to find colour palette ideas, and I'll tag that video up above and also down in the description for additional guidance for you guys, so be sure to check it out after watching this one. So let's talk through um, how we're going to be doing this. All right, so I've zoomed you all in. Now the first thing I need is some scrap paper so I can scribble down my color combo ideas and I'm just leaning on a notepad behind here. So when you search up images of the Great Mosque of Jinn, you'll find photos taken at different times of the day. Some depict it as very pale, almost like sandstone. So this is gonna be our first option. In other lighting conditions, it has a warm sandy effect, a more creamy tone for our second option. And as the day progresses, it takes on a richer, darker tone, still warm, but with a more earthy red undertone. That's going to be our third option. So we have three different choices to experiment with, each of which can take this page in three completely different artistic directions. So the first is going to be suited to a more muted palette. The second, a light, bright and vibrant palette. And the third is going to work well with rich, earthy, warm, bold tones. So let's scribble out some ideas. Now, for our muted or desaturated combo, I'm going to base it around putty beige. And I'm just going to add in some shadow color and a highlight color. So, um, for my shadow color, I think I'm going to go with sandbar brown. Um, where am I going to? We'll scribble up here. So, we've got our sandbar brown. And then we're going to add in our putty beige. And I'm going to finish it off with French grey 10% as my lightest colour. You could add a cream to give it a bit more warmth. But we want more of that muted colour. So I'm going to go with... Uh, a French grey 10%. It's still a warmish grey, so we don't want to use a cool grey here. Okay, so next option was a light creamy colour. For this, I'm going to start with goldenrod. And I'm going to add in some yellow ochre. And... I'm going to go with sand. You could use sand or jasmine or even both. Here's sand. And then cream as my lightest colour. So we're doing a gradient here. Um, if you haven't already, pop over and watch my um, Blending for Beginners video. That it just explains um, how to get a good colour gradient as well. Um, so that is our second option. Now, our third option... Um, you could do more of a burnt orange tone or you could do a reddish orange tone to add in more depth and shadow. So if we're going to do a burnt orange, let me show you. So I'll show you two different ways we can make this darker for our third option. So if we're going on a more burnt orange direction, I've got burnt ochre here. So this is going to be used, this combo here is going to be used as our base. our burnt ochre and then we've got mineral orange then I'm going to add in my golden rod my yellow ochre and I think I'm going to skip sand and go straight to cream so I don't have too many colors okay so that's our third option but we could also do a different third option and make it even more um, shadowy and more have more depth of color so 
Um, Tuscan red. We're going to add in some red tones here. Sorry, I've got my paper on the side here. Joys of being left-handed. I don't want my hand to get in your way or smudge my colours. So that was Tuscan Red. Terracotta is next. Um, burnt Ochre again. We're going to need that to transition to the lighter shades. Uh, back to golden rod. Yellow ochre again. And sand. And I'm going to finish with sand. You could add cream again but because I want it to be more um have more depth to it and more shadows to it I'm not going to add in the lightest color I'm going to leave it at that so we have option one option two and then or technically option three and option four but two different options for what I was explaining as option three now even with option two here if you needed more shadows you could easily just add in some mineral orange up the top here And there's another shadowy color. Okay, these are just rough scribbles. So these are our options for our mosque. Now, our mountains and our ground are also sandy, so we can alter these combinations for the ground and the mountains as well. But our next step, before we decide which one of these combos is going to be working best on our page here, we need to consider what other colours we'd like to include on the page. Now, I personally prefer working with a limited or a reduced colour palette just to avoid overwhelming the page with too many colours. Um, now, in my mind, I'm envisioning colours from the blue-green family, such as aqua, teal, um, along with the possibility of adding in purple, blush, or even peachy tones, maybe even all of the above. However, if you struggle with this step in the process, grab your color wheel. If you grab your color wheel, I'll demonstrate how you can come to the same conclusion as I just did for selecting the colors that's going to suit your page. Now, I do delve deeper into this topic on my previous video on color theory that I mentioned earlier, uh, which you can check out for more information. So let me grab my color wheel. Let's start with the uh, yellow orange color family, as this is going to be our primary color for the mosque and possibly for the ground and mountains too. Now, I mentioned um, blue, greens, purples, and peach or blush tones. So let's explore some different color schemes here. And I'll just zoom you out a little bit. Okay, so I know I definitely want to add blue, green into the page because I love how these colors work together. And when we combine yellow, orange, and blue, green, you can see here we have the beginning of a triadic color scheme. This allows us to add in some red violet here to include the purple that I mentioned earlier. So we have our yellow orange, our blue green and our red violet. Now I also talked about adding peachy or blush tones. So if we adjust the color wheel just a little bit like this. We have, there we go, we have yellow orange, red orange, blue green and blue violet so that is going to include all of the four colors that i mentioned earlier that i thought would look good on this page um so now we have an idea for colors on the page let's have a look at our page and see where they may fit in so if we exclude the mosque the mountains and the ground we're left with elements such as the person here with their outfit some vases, a cactus, we've got some trees and a plane. That's actually not very many elements left. So I think we should stick with purple and our blue green. So either our aqua or a teal color and then potentially reuse some of the mosque's colors for other elements. As for the well, the goat and the tree trunks, I'm going to keep them in warm tones using warm grays, 
uh, French greys, along with warm toned browns like chocolate, maybe some light umber, maybe even some artichoke just to keep things nice and warm. If we go back to our mosque combos, each of these will work with a different shade of blue, green and purple. So for the lightest combination, we need to consider that other colours on the page should be muted and desaturated as well, since it is a desaturated tint. So the more white you add to a colour, the lighter the colour will appear. So think of pastel colours or um, quite light shades with maybe a greyish undertone, like a greyed lavender. Now, the other three colour combinations all, sh all share yellow ochre and goldenrod as their base colours. So what that means is we can match all of them by using purple and blue-green combinations that also share base colours. Um, however, with the darker options, we are going to need to add more depth and shadow colours to our combination. So let me show you exactly what I mean. And we'll start with our blue-green tone. So... One second. If we use aqua, light aqua, and sky blue light as our base colors, yeah. Okay, so let's show you this down here. So let's go with aqua first. So. Aqua, light aqua, and sky blue light. Oh. Okay, so these colors actually look great on their own and they will really suit this light combo. So one other consideration we need to look at here is whether we want a particular element to stand out more than the others. And there are a few ways to achieve this. If we use the light com combo here on the mosque and add some darker colors to our base blue green combo, this is going to stand out more. Alternatively, if we apply the darker colors to every other element on the page and keep our mosque light, the mosque is going to stand out due to its lightness compared to the rest of the page. The reverse approach also works. So if we use darker shades on the mosque and then lighter shades on the other elements, the mosque will then become the focal point that way. So with either option, what we want today is the mosque to be our focal point. I hope this is all making sense. So let's tweak this combo a bit and I'm going to draw a couple more. Um, same thing, the aqua, we'll do a couple of them, and our light aqua, and our sky blue light. I will have a video coming out um, or a series of videos coming out later this month as well on um, color, com color combos. <laughs> so for all the different brands, I'm going to um, go through some color combos with you guys. Um, so we have our aqua, light aqua, sky blue light. Now we can change these up a bit like I mentioned. So for this one, we're going to add cobalt turquoise. And you can see immediately what a difference that makes. Now for this one, oops, for this one, let's add in peacock blue. This is going to give it a more bluey tone where the other one gave it a more greeny tone. Okay. I didn't scribble that base color out too well did I um, so we've got more of a greeny tone here more of a bluey tone here we can even add in more shadows by adding indigo blue and I mean you can go one step further than that and add in black as well and make it even darker so these are our options for our blue green color combos as well so um, like I said before if we do the mosque dark we can then do um, these lighter tones to make the mosque stand out. We can always do the mosque light and have these 
darker colors to make the mosque stand out or we could do them all light we could do them all dark it really depends on what end result you're looking for all right so now let's explore our purple colors i'm, I'm just going to zoom you guys back in quite far away there um so we want a red violet shade to match so consider colors like dahlia purple mulberry um lavender even let me have a look here so if i just scribble down here it's our dahlia purple mulberry I'm not sure about that mulberry actually it's a bit too pinky for my liking um and orchid or lavender lavender that's your lavender color whoops yeah that mulberry's made it a little bit too pink for my liking it would match but it's a little bit too bright compared to the other colors so um, and this is where with our muted tones, you could use your grey lavenders and maybe your lilacs instead of these bright colours as well. But I think I'm leaning more towards these tones, so we haven't gone down that route. Um, now, I'm going to change that up. And if I use uh, dark purple. So this combination is definitely out and this combination is out for me um dahlia purple so we've got dark purple dahlia and i'm gonna go from dahlia straight into orchid so if you don't have orchid um, and go in with lavender. I like that. That's a good combo. You can add in um, white to brighten it up. You could add in a grade lavender, which would mute it a little bit. And you can also add in uh, black grape to darken, oh, to darken it up. And if you really wanted it extra dark, like I said about adding black here, you could also add black here. And you could also go that far by adding in like black raspberry and black to this color combo as well. So these are all our choices here. I think we've got everything mapped out now that we can make our choice for what colors we want on our page. So I've already crossed out... pencils everywhere i've already crossed out the muted tone i don't want to head that way i want a more sandy creamy tone um i'm thinking i can use different combinations of these for the mosque the mountains and the ground so i think i think i might go with this combination for the mosque i'm not sure if i'm going to do it with or without that mineral orange i'm thinking without just to have more of a contrast so it would be more those lighter tones for our mosque. And then I'm either going to go in and maybe do the mountains quite dark. And the ground, something similar to this. Yes, I think that's what I'm going to do. The mountains are quite smaller, so... If I did the ground this dark, the focus is going to then go towards, just move it more into focus there. The focus is then going to go more towards the ground because the, the deep dark colours are going to make your eyes head straight to that part of the page and I don't want that. So definitely going to do the light colours for the mosque. I'm thinking these more orangey tones for the ground and one or two of these one of these for the mountains now for our bluey combo i quite like this color here i prefer that to this one and this one i think it goes better with these with all three combos actually 
Um, I do like this as well. So some elements, if I need a lighter tone, I'll go with this. So we're going to use different combinations of aqua, light aqua, sky blue light and the cobalt turquoise. So you could take some off the bottom, take some off the top and use them on your elements, such as these books here. And then, of course, we're going with this purple combo and... I may or may not add the dark colors at the top. So with any of the other elements on the page, we may add or remove colors from our combos, but they all have the same base shade. So um, I could do a blue vase, a blue book, and a blue plane, but what I might do is a, a teal color for them. But what I might do is take off the bottom, take off the top, or I could add more to the top. Um, either way, this is our foundation for our color combination and the same for this one here as well. So with our color combinations in hand, it's time to start coloring. I will be filming this page as a color along for the channel and then I'll return to show you the final result. Now, not everything goes to plan. Sometimes I do switch it up after coloring some elements and decide to go in a whole other direction. We will discuss that when I come back with the completed page. Also, you may be watching this thinking this process looks quite convoluted, but this is the process that just automatically happens inside my brain. And I'm trying to um, figure out how to put this into words for you guys so you can see this process happening. But um, after time, this becomes second nature and it just, just happens in your head as you look at the page and you can write the colors down. Um, also, I know my Prismacolor pencils. Um, Better than I know myself. So I know what colors are going to go with what and how to put a com color combination together just by picking up a pencil. Um, that comes with time. So hopefully this is making sense and hopefully it doesn't seem too convol convoluted for you all as well. Now I will be back in a moment with the completed page and to discuss where we went with our color combinations. Okay, so we've come to the exciting part now where I show you the completed coloured page and we'll go through the colour palettes that I used. Now throughout the colour along, I did stick with the blue and purple combinations as I mentioned earlier. Um, I do have to admit there was a moment of temptation to change my colour selection to go for some red tones instead of the blues and purples. Now this urge struck me after I'd already coloured the mosque, the mountains and the ground. I thought reds would look really nice, maybe some reds and greens. Um, but in the end I decided to stick with the blues and purples. Now I did encounter a little hiccup. I added some glossy accents to the mosque door and as it's dried, my purple combination has very unexpectedly turned into a vibrant pink. So it might look like I introduced an extra colour. But it was originally purple. It was the same color combination um, that I used for the rest of the purple on the page. Um, now, I didn't immediately notice it. I took some photos and videos as soon as I finished the color along. And then I came back to check it when it was dry and, I was, and it was just hot pink. So um, I should have left it alone, but I didn't. And I actually got a piece of sand, got a bit of sandpaper and I tried to sand back the glossy accents and go over it with some purple. And it just looked a right mess, so I just added the glossy accents back on top and left it as pink. But now it's a little bit more muted than it originally was. It was quite vibrant, um, but it does look a little bit messy. Thankfully, nothing has happened on the other side because I was trying to take the glossy accents off originally with a craft knife. So, um, perfect video for this mistake to happen on. Um, but these little surprises can happen and that's okay. I should have left it just as the hot pink because the pink does um, or would have matched quite well with the uh, purple and teal tones as well. So it wasn't a really big deal. It was just my perfectionist brain getting annoyed and frustrated and it's still frustrating to look at. Um, but it matches okay. Um, I should have just left it alone though. <laughs> so the purpose of this video was to provide you with insight into how I plan my coloring pages and choose my coloring palettes. So I hope this has been helpful for you all, especially for those who were struggling and wanted to know my process. Um, just remember, there's no one size fits all method when it comes to planning a page or in some cases not planning a page at all. Uh, whatever works best for you is most important. As long as you enjoy the process and you're having fun coloring, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just experiment, have fun, let your creativity flow. Feel free to make mistakes. That's how we learn. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Until next time, happy coloring and bye for now.